Our somatic cells are diploid. They contain two copies of each chromosome. One comes from the mother, the other from the father. These chromosomes have two chromatids, as their DNA content duplicates before the cell divides. The DNA content of the two chromatids is identical. When a diploid cell is divided by mitosis, the resulting daughter cells are also diploid, but their chromosomes have only one chromatid. These chromatids break up, and the DNA duplicates before the next mitosis. The chromosomes in the cell will have two chromatids, and cell division starts again. During the process, the number of chromosomes does not decrease. Unlike in meiosis, during which haploid gametes are formed from diploid cells. Mitosis consists of four phases. The first phase is the prophase. Chromosomes are formed from the chromatin, which consists of DNA and proteins. The centrosome duplicates and moves towards the opposite poles of the cell. In the metaphase, the nuclear membrane breaks down. The spindle apparatus is formed. Then the chromosomes line up along the equatorial plane of the cell. In the anaphase, chromosomes split into chromatids, forming chromosomes with one chromatid, which then move towards the opposite poles of the cell. In the telophase, the cell splits, and the nuclear membrane is formed again. Then, the chromosomes break up. That is, during mitosis, two diploid cells are formed from one diploid cell. Certain cells in our bodies, such as nerve cells, are not able to divide. Others may be able to divide several times during our lives. The cell cycle is a finely tuned process. Disturbances may lead to uncontrolled cell growth and the formation of tumors. Vascular plants have a life cycle.
Within the group of angiosperms, plants are grouped by the number of cotyledons in the seed. There are dicotyledons, or dicots, and monocotyledons, or monocots. Dicots usually have taproot systems, which consist of a central root, called the taproot, with lateral roots branching out. Monocots typically have fibrous root systems, but usually the easiest way to differentiate between monocot and dicot plants is to compare their leaves. Dicots have net veined leaves with secondary veins branching out from a primary vein. The leaves are attached to the stem by petioles. Most monocots, however, have parallel veined leaves that are attached to the stem by leaf sheaths, that is, their base surrounds the stem. A dicot stem often branches, while a monocot stem does not typically branch out. There are also differences in the structure of dicot and monocot flowers. In dicot flowers, the perianth is differentiated. It consists of petals and a sepal. The flowers display pentamerous radial symmetry, meaning the number of their components can be divided by five. Yellow pimpernel flowers, for example, consist of five sepals, five petals, and five stamens. In monocot flowers, however, the perianth is homogeneous. It consists of tepals. Monocot flowers display trimerous radial symmetry. That is, the number of their tepals can be divided by three. Tulip flowers consist of six tepals and six stamens. Vascular bundles are arranged in a ring in the stems of herbaceous dicots, while they are scattered in monocots. In the vascular bundle, the xylem conducts water and dissolved minerals from the roots to the other parts of the plants, while the phloem conducts organic substances. The vascular bundles in herbaceous dicots contain a cambium layer between the phloem and the xylem, responsible for the growth of the stem. The vascular bundles in monocots do not typically contain cambium, so their stem cannot become thicker. Dicots appeared at an earlier stage of evolution. About 200,000 known herbaceous and woody plants belong